everybody, it's Cinnamon Cooney, your art sherpa, and today I'm going to be showing you how you can paint this fall leaf. This was very generously donated to us as a photographic reference. This is used a lot out there online. We got permission from the original artist. Information is in the description below. Go by and send some love and see some of these other amazing photographs that you can bring into your own home. So I am super thrilled to be doing this. I think this is a really gorgeous piece. I'm going to be using pretty much one brush until I get to the signature. The colors are real simple today. Let's check those out. I have a phthalo blue, a lizarin crimson, cad red medium, cad yellow medium, carbon black, and titanium white. On this though, realize that you could use just a warm red and a cool red. And what I mean by that is, see how this red kind of looks a little orange? And this red reminds you a little bit more of blood. That's what I'm talking about there. And a bright, vibrant yellow. The blue, I do love phthalo, but you could use a lot of different blues as long as you are really happy with the blue that it gave you and a good black paint. So you see, it's not that like, oh, we have to use only this material on this particular project. And I always love when those are simple like that. On the mic is my husband, John. Hey, guys. He's been very sweet and quiet while I go through a very long intro. Ooh, um, there's a... he, he's the one who says, hey, do you know we were supposed to be live a while ago? <laughs> I'm sitting there in the middle of my <laughs> breakfast biscuit going... <laughs> and on this afternoon <laughs> so on top of that telling me i gotta go get my makeup on so i can hang out with you lovely people and show you a really cool painting <laughs> he also tracks me with cameras and makes sure that you see every step of the action because how this works is i paint something you paint something i paint something you paint something and at the end of this we have a really pretty fall leaf floating on a lake that you can frame and hang in your home how exciting is that that's pretty exciting. I'm into it. Let's look at the canvas panel. So I have one wish on here today. I have but one wish. And the wish is peace, love, family, healing, and health, and hope for everybody. Just everybody should have all of those things because we deserve them. This is a pre-blacked uh, canvas panel by Artist Loft. But listen, you can just paint this black with the black paint you have. You don't have to... Sometimes they're on a really cool discount and they're a really nice canvas. So if you see them and you grab them, you can do a lot of lovely stuff with them. But yes, you can totally use black paint. That's completely fine. All right, I think I'm ready to get in. Are you? Yeah, I've got but one brush and I'm going to be doing my cat's tongue today. Let me find the one I'm going to. This will be my brush of choice and I'm going to get it a little bit wet. And I'll go ahead and just sort of put the chalk into the the world and we've got our little lovely intentions so that's all you have to do to clean up any of your chalks is just use a damp brush and i'm gonna bring my own picture and picture over here one brush to stroke them all now seriously i have a traceable for do. this and the reason i do traceables on projects like this is drawing is a skill that you build up over time and you may not have that yet i'm going to show you how to draw this in because you might be, you know, really antsy to do that. But if drawing is a reason you're not painting, please know that we have a traceable. And it's free and you just get it from the website. When you're doing this type of leaf, you want to come up about this far up the segment right here. And you're going to make another vein. I have found that drawing in the veins can really help me get my shape of my leaf. Because these leaves are some complicated structures, if you haven't noticed. Oh, yeah. So that's that there. When you're coming from the back, I find that there's usually an arc out like this. So we'll do our little arc out. And then they have a little swing in like that. This particular side actually, because leaves are really weirdly not as symmetrical as they could be, arcs out, scoops into a point, scoops back into a point. Over here though, it has another little point before it does the scoop point scoop. I just found that interesting. It is now, interesting. Now this part of the leaf will zig back like that. It makes kind of like a little U-turn. And once you've made the U-turn, then you can scoop into the point. Over here, you can scoop back down. And it also has a bit of a U-turn. So when we're doing these, I'm always sort of trying to balance these things out in the leaf. And that's how I get that fall leaf shape in each time. 
And they can have a lot of personality. Yours doesn't need to look exactly like mine. But again, if you need it to be exact, exact, that's what the traceable is for. Once I have that in, I get to have a lot of fun. You do? I do. No fun Here's for the Sherpa. your pro tip. You ready for a pro tip? Okay. I'm going to drink from my tentacle cup and give you a pro tip that's going to make your painting experience a heck of a lot easier. Okay. I'm down for that. Now, I'm painting with Artist Lab Professional Level 3 paint. Okay. okay, so that means it has a lot of pigment. It's very saturated. You guys see me paint with Golden. You see me paint with Holbein. You see me paint with USNR. You see me paint with different paint companies, Matisse. They all have a lot of pigment. But maybe you're painting with a craft paint or an economy paint, something that you got at Walmart or you just grabbed online. It may not have as much pigment, and that can make your painting seem crazy for you. If that is the case, you guys, right, like so if you have Artist Loft or Basics or something like that, Paint your whole leaf white first. Let it dry. Mm. We're not going to wait for all of you guys, <laughs> but that's what you would be doing at home, is paint inside your sketched area all white, and that will keep your leaf looking bright. Now, if you're painting with me and you're painting Artist Loft, you're painting Golden, the darkness of the canvas is actually a benefit to you. Now, so that's why we do it this way because of what we're using. Now, you're also... Uh, your tool of choice here was the red-handled cat's tongue. Yes. But if you did not have such a fine instrument and you just had, uh, now I'm not saying that others aren't made as well, but you know, if you if you didn't have one, you were you using a cat's tongue. You could use a number eight, right? Could you use like a filbert? You could use a filbert. You could use a bright. You could use a round. The shapes and structures on this particular painting are very simple. So um, what you want is just a good tool that you can rely on. We like our stuff, but we like lots of other stuff, too. Exactly. It, just as long as you're painting, we're happy. Now, I'm going to take my CAD red and my CAD yellow. You know, if you guys are using Hansa, that's fine. And Naphthol, that's okay. Don't stress on that. I'm going to make an orange. And I'm going to begin by painting my leaf in. And then I'll come up here and kind of catch the stem a little bit nicely. using. I press very lightly when I want a thin line. The lighter my pressure, the lighter the line. And I'm ah. going to just paint this all in neatly. If you guys were painting those economical paints, go ahead and hit it white first. You can get a good result. You just have to know a couple of those little tricks like, oh, oh, if I, I mean, like, because sometimes I've been out. And I was at a retreat and I had to go get, like, uh, paint from the dollar store once. It happened. Mm. You know? Yeah. I didn't want to miss out on the painting activities. Uh, well, yeah, you know, paint. Any, if you can get paint on the surface, that's the important part. Right. And it was tough paint to work with, but I worked it out. <laughs> <laughs> and everyone's like, how did you do that? And I'm like, I know to paint my canvas white first if I'm using a really transparent paint. So it's really never, ever about like, oh, I do craft paint, so I can't do fine art. That's not true. Of course you can. Lots of people do. Yeah. It's, uh, but I, go, I do like this particular paint. Now, you will see that there may be some archival nature yes. issues with your more student and, and uh, yeah, budget Yeah, I, ha I have a, a friend who's a really fantastic YouTuber, and she's testing a new product. And I was like, tape that up and stick it in the window for two weeks and see how it fades. Yeah. Because that is another factor. Sometimes, like, in economic paints, they'll use dyes to create a brighter saturation in the color. But it fades out in two weeks. That's disappointing when you look over at your painting and you're like, didn't I paint that brighter? Oh. What happened? And it was just the fade out. That's what happens sometimes with inexpensive products. Yeah. That, that can happen. It can happen. See, we're just painting this orange. And the black is even on my really good paint showing through. But that's something that I wanted in my painting for this with this paint. Like, that was a desired effect. But I know that, like, basics wouldn't do this for nothing this way. You have to paint it, like, white first. Right. But this is, you know, these, these are doing pretty well. No, these are great. <laughs> these have a lot of pigment. You can see by the second coat we're going to have this depth. And the other thing you have to know about, like, a lot of the stuff that I do as an artist is that I am constantly, constantly um, 
making sure that how the painting is constructed sort of shows. And what I mean by that is that I like the brush stroke to show. I like how it's made to show. So a lot of times I will be looking into that space to get that really working. Now the next thing I'm going to start to do, I'm going to get a little of my phthalo blue, right? And I'm going to come kind of here in the corner and I'm going to just be brushing back and forth some phthalo blue. And you'll notice I'm making this little, it's, there's a little time, there's not an extreme curve to the stroke, but I have to see, you know, see and own that there's a little bit of a curve to the stroke. And the just phthalo blue over the black canvas looks like a Prussian blue, looks like a, you know, deep indigo blue. It's really gorgeous and I love the effect. You get into waterfalls and all kinds of cool stuff with these canvases. So they're some of my favorite. I don't know why these pre-adjusted ones are better than pre-adjusted ones. They are a little bit. Now, as I'm coming through here and I'm making these little strokes, I'm going to add a little white. So see, I'm just loading on the tip of the brush. You can see me flipping to make sure that there's white into the brush. And I'm going to create a lighter value. Look at that, that will start to work into this here. Showing that reflection and what's going on in the sky above the leaf. We'll take this a little bit to here. Maybe put a little mark there. As I come back, I'll st I won't rinse the white out, but I'll let it darken up. Coming back through here. Just making sure that we're getting that water value. So you can see a little of my canvas is showing through, but it's not a hot mess. I may be a hot mess, but the painting is okay. <laughs> <laughs> this is really cool. I like, I'm chasing, you're kind of moving around a bare bit. Mm -hmm. I'm, now I'm going to go around the whole leaf for a second with a little bit of a very, it's not going to be my darkest blue color, but it's going to be pretty dark. This is going to let me come back and pop my shadows in mm. with my carbon black. when I'm ready. And I got to finish painting the center leaf before I can really do that. Because I have to put a little of the leaf underwater. So see, there's just the smidge, a smidge of the white and the blue, just enough where you're really seeing it. And that's going to let me play with those reflection values really easily. So coming around here, I'm going to keep coming around here with that color, like in through here. Let's go, guys. Woo! Say woo. It'll help you. <laughs> Whoop it up, as Vicki Gundelson would say. No. But don't yell at anyone on a ski slope. <laughs> that's, that's crazy. <laughs> okay. All right. So come in here. All right. I'm just getting that around there. Now, at this point, I'm going to stop there and I'm going to come back around and get some of this. Now, I'm going to just do a little brush stroke right here like this, brushing it, and then I'll get right into the leaf and I'll fill this out down here. We talk a lot about how water is a mirror. Uh, in the show. And so that's a lot of what we're doing is just painting the reflections of trees and clouds and deep shadows as the water ripples. Setting this up allows us to start to create that space kind of, you know, beautifully. You can always get just a little more white onto your brush if you want to see right here. Talk about just a little bit of maybe a brighter light that happened too specific. I'm going to load up some blue and I'm going to make some crazy shapes. 
So right here, I'm going to wiggle a little bit of blue. Look how I'm wiggling my brush. I'll come right up to the leaf. Right up to the stem. Just a smidge of white. Really close to the stem with this. And I'll sweep that stroke back. Look at that. And I'm going to leave some of this black. I'll still come back with some of my darker black. Now let's make another little reflection here. You're just going to wiggle the brush in. Come up like that. Stroke that back with a little bit of a curve. That's looking pretty good. So we're building that space now. Those little chunks of light. They're kind of fun to build. I enjoyed it the first time. I'll go ahead and come real close here. I'm going to wiggle right there. And then wiggle that back. And that creates a nice little uneven shape of light that I'm dealing with. Now right here, I could go ahead and add a little more white to my blue. I'll just wiggle here. Make a little reflection and swoop that back a bit. I'm going to get a little water on my brush and work it into my brush because I'm not using any glazing medium. And that's just going to improve the flow of my paint. Come back, scoop a little bit. Nice, thick, reflective strokes and a little bit calligraphy. See how I'm like that with the calligraphy of it? Where I'm almost using some letter writing thought and to talk about the thing. Loading back up. Let's just make sure that we've got that happening right there. And also get a little of that right there. I need a little more pigment. My pigment's getting thin, so I'm loading up. I'm going to go stroke and then come around. And like I go swing in and swing back. Do that, swing in and swing back. Just like a little calligraphy pen. That's doing a lot of good for me. I got a lot worked in there. Now I'm going to rinse out and I'm going to get all, all all the blue out. If you need to go wash your brush in the sink to know you have all, all, all the blue out, do that. Because blue will gray your oranges and yellows and make your leaf seem dull and not vibrant at all. And you don't want that. Now I'm going to take my lizard. I'm going to load it into my brush. You see me going back and forth back and forth and I'm going to get a little of my CAD and I'm going to mix these together. These are good colors to have in because as we come to the holidays, if you haven't painted the red Santa on the red wall, you're going to want to. And we use a lot of that. <laughs> so it's good to have them in the bucket now. So I am just coming here and I'm making sure I've got a nice pointed little leaf. I'm going to tap out this darker value here, and even into this little point over here. Now, I'm not sure if you're more talky or if I'm just more quiet. Yeah, you are more quiet than usual. Well, I keep, you accused me of that last time, too. And I was like, I just sort of like watching you paint. And you're just and like, you know, <laughs> I'm not trying to interrupt, <laughs> but, you know. You want to say, hey, I'm still here? Yeah, I'm not... Uh... You haven't I'm, gone? I haven't gone anywhere. I'm just watching and I'm enjoying the show. I'm like so everybody glad. else over here. So <laughs> we're just kind of. You, know. you like you a fall floating leaf? I like me watching the Sherpa paint a leaf. I, I, didn't, I don't know what to say. It's nice to paint a leaf. I hope these are not the last leaves you paint. This would be really yeah. nice on a river stone. Now, you were saying. Dip in water real quick. I was saying what? No, the, the original artist, Bernie? Yep, Bernie. 
Ernie. So uh, he I think gave, it's like also called Madison Photography. He's got a couple websites. That was the website he asked us to use. Okay, so yeah, you got permission from him, and, and I did. You can go see his reference, the original reference photo on his website. Right. No, I mean, and he's not saying, "Hey, come paint all my stuff." No, no, not right? at all. But what he was saying, I I noticed that his his images were getting uh, used without permission a lot of places, and so. I thought it would be nice to at least get him a little shout out, a little love out there to say, hey, you know, photography artists really matter. And we as painters, even as we're using reference photos, should ask permission. Yeah. Sometimes I do things, you know, to, to kind of maybe drive awareness to that point is like, hey, we should ask permission and make sure an artist is OK if we are inspired by their stuff. I mean, obviously, there's this one thing where your personal use in your own home and it's never leaving your wall. You know, it's not like the art police will break in and kick in your door and <laughs> go see. They don't do that. Don't write me. It's really honestly never happened to anybody ever. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I keep trying to find them because I want to join. I hear they can like, you know, paratrooper into places and they can take. You know. I know it can feel like that sometimes. I'm going to get a little more of my red on there. But <laughs> I did talk to him. He was very nice. Um, we're going to actually contact him back and see if, if this could even be part of our labs program. Um, he's just really lovely. And, I, yeah, yeah, I have other leaves in my licensing catalog that I've used that I can use. I just thought it was a nice way to give a shout out. To we didn't want to leave this one out. We didn't want to leave this leaf out. I've waited like a year to paint it. I got permission a year ago. So on the red, I plan things a little bit in advance. You wouldn't think so, considering how often I'm late. Yeah, <laughs> they were asking on the red. Could could you use uh, something other than lizard and crimson? Just yeah. any dark red. So on a fall leaf, when I'm painting, like say someone just gave me a random kit, yeah, it's a random kit from somewhere, and they said paint a leaf with these random paints. I would look for a cool red, a warm red, and a yellow with enough pigment to be saturated that could mix a fall orange, right? Not like a neon orange, not a safety orange, but a rusted leaf orange with all those colors. And that's what I would work with. And then I would look for a deep blue that would cover my paint. So it's not something you should feel limited by. Mm. And anyway, now I'm going to get a little more of my pad orange on here. Start to blend in through here into these leaves while they're still wet. I, it's a subtle thing getting this cat in here first, but it'll do a cool thing in a minute. In a minute. In a minute. So your paint should be bound, right? It shouldn't be lifting. If you have an experience where your paint's lifting, uh, it's probably the brand of your paint. And what you would do is just like let it dry and hit the next layer. That can happen though. I get it. So when I have that done, I'm going to rinse out a little bit. A little bit. A little bit. I'm going to come get my CAD loaded into my brush, and I'm going to get my yellow loaded into my brush, and I'm going to make that fall aforementioned orange that we get. It's not my lightest color on my leaf because that's the veining. An aforementioned fall orange. And I'm going to put a little bit of that right here, a little mark of that right there, and a little bit of it right here. That's a fiery orange. Yeah, isn't that nice? It really is. Pull some of this into this leaf. So the paint's a little wet still. I have to and that say. lets us blend in wet into wet. Let's get some very nice effect in our leaf. Little tonality. See how we're doing? I love the, the fireness to this. Yeah, you can play with this a long time. Don't don't feel limited. Here we go. Working it through my brush. See how I get that paint all loaded in there and well mixed through what I'm trying to? That's what I'm doing. I'm gonna just blend here and i like how blending into the paint allows me to create some smooth effects that i can play with i can orange up the middle of this leaf and again we're making something where we see the brush strokes don't we we're seeing them but we should have a leaf that's got you know dark dark values at the edge and kind of lighter values at the middle if you lose any of that, you just get right into your alizarin crimson and come back, see, and blend right in. Isn't that fun? Well, that's fun. Because it's a very, you know, profound color. It's profound and historic. 
know, this is those weird moments where you have, you know, stuff in common with artists that came way, way before you. I'm just trying to make sure the edges of the leaf have this little, this little bit of energy to them. And that'll make it fun when I go to put my veins in. Rinse, 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 rinse. And you want all of this orange out of the leaf. All of it out. Now, this is a good time to dry the painting and to sip your coffee and to pat yourself on the back for making a little time for your creativity. I'll tell you, with all the craziness going on in my life, even though I wasn't here on time, I actually look forward to these lives because they're my settle down time. They're my de-stress moment just as much as it is for you, it is for me. Like, seriously, I'm like, okay, I get to paint it. I get to paint in an hour. <laughs> and I'm very excited. Oh, this is I'm so I'm going to dry this and you say okay. hi to everybody. I will say hi. And that button. Okay. So, hey guys. I want to say thank you guys for coming and joining us. We really, really appreciate all of y'all coming by and seeing us. It's... Um, just a real pleasure to be able to spend this time with you guys. And, uh, you know, I wanted to say, take some time to, you know, uh, say thank you to someone special in your life. You know, um, I don't think that uh, I spend enough time saying thank you to the loved ones in my life. And I think it's all good that uh, we remember to, to take, take a little moment and say thank you to those. Oh, yeah, gratitude. Like you. I love you. I love Thank you, you for being awesome. Thank you for being awesome. I couldn't do this without you. I would literally not have known I was live. Well, so clearly I, I couldn't do it without you. I, I would be a dude with some cameras in a room. Oh, you would be making video games. You know you would. All right. So I am loading uh, my brush with my carbon black. Now I can use any black you have, but one of the things that I do like about the carbon black is really this is essentially lamp black, carbon black. It's a very deep, cool black. And I can get some cool effects with it. So when I come here, and you'll notice it even against, like, other things. I'm going to just bring this little dark value right there, coming around the edge. And then I'm going to come around here and, again, bring a little of that dark value into this. Now, what was fun is that you can see some shadow sort of into these waters. You know? So we're coming around. I'll make a little curve line here and another one there. You guys see that? That's me rippling it up. And go ahead and ripple a counter ripple around the edges of some of the leaves. It can be nice to come back into this and add this extra deep value. So feel like you can. Because you can. Now, there's a cool little sort of triangle shadow that happens right here. Kind of peeks up, comes around. I'm going to go ahead and go around there. And I love this little curve. So see how I've curved here, swig out, and come over. That's just like a nice way to get that done. I'm making these deep values so that we can see that there's a real cast of light. This will help us get it. So we swig out. That's a totally made up word, but I'm using it. What is? Swig. <laughs> I make up words sometimes. I'm you, sorry. You have some Sherpa-isms. I do. I have some Sherpa-isms where I'm trying to vocalize this experience of painting. And, and I'm going to give a big art hug to Sherpa Allen, who helped collect the first of the Sherpa-isms in the Sherpa soap box. That is right. I haven't seen Alan in a while. Is Alan here today? Uh, not today. I saw. Well, I think let's he's all send Alan Love wherever he is, doing good stuff, educating kids around the world. Yeah, and there's, we have another. We have prof We have a. We have a professor Strange of physics, who is educating America's youth in physics. He was Dude. painting along with us earlier. So really, art high five. That is fantastic. I Our love teachers. it. So I've added these deep values in there, and that's really going to pop. But when it pops is when we contrast it with um, the water around it. Now is a great time to thoroughly rinse out your brush. And if you can't get it thoroughly rinsed out, thoroughly, thoroughly, you're going to want to get fresh water and a fresh like, brush or soap it out. So I'm going to come and get a little of my yellow into my brush. 
and a bunch of my white, like you do. I may even get into this space where it's kind of like oranged. We're working it out. And with as light of a pressure as I can muster, if you remember what happened, so we're going to add a little highlight right here on the stem. A little one. I'm just touching very lightly. Now, as lightly as I can muster, I'm going to come down the leaf. And I'm going to break off and make that old vein the one that helped me draw it. Because, you know, that helps you draw the leaf. I'm going to get some more yellow into that. I'll work it through the brush so it looks good. Just working it out. Fine line. I'm going to come right here on the left hand side and make a little vein come up a little bit and make another little vein out come up a little bit make sure this tapers make a vein and a little vein and maybe a vein between these two this one the center leaf i'm going to come up this again and then i will run a little vein off to the left another little vein off to the right Ooh. That's a little hard, so I'm going to come back here and soften that up. Another little vein. Another little vein. If you have to change brushes to get fine lines, definitely do that. Don't feel a little vein going upwards, a little vein to the right, and a couple here. So see, we've, we've veined our leaf a little bit. We've talked about that a little bit. If our black is dry, you can rinse, 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 rinse. Rinse, 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 rinse. And we can come in and get our bright highlights. I'm going to take my blue and work it into my brush. And I'm going to get a lot of my white. I need it to be blue but bright. And I'm going to come back here and I'm going to make a reflection across the leaf. Another one, another one. I'm going to wiggle out some brighter reflections through here. Let's put one right there. Let's get a little so, more blue on here too. That's what? funny. What? So, so. Oh, Siri was like, Siri is feeling my phone thirsty, answered. man. Siri's like, come on. I'm here. I'm making a little swig. We, no, we have a community member okay. <laughs> whose name's Sari, and she was asking, uh, and my phone answered when I said, so Siri, but I meant sorry. Anyway, so so Sari asks, Cinnamon, I've got too many, ci so Cinnamon, yes. you still like the quality of Artist Loft paint? Okay, yes, I do. I actually still do. We have all of the colors. Um... We bought everything I'll, she's currently paying with. I'll have an official, with. like, I like this tube of this better and that, you know, because I think what happens is, like, every company has something that they make really well mm -hmm. and that they shine in, and then and then you hopefully end up with an art box that just gives you the best results. But, yeah, I am really happy. Yeah. so I'm Really happy. And, and, and what I will say is that um, we bought all the paint you're currently seeing. It's like, we were given some paint. But, but we, we went and bought some. We went and used it all up, and so now we've had to go back and buy some more. So, just... I mean, it's, it, it works. I'm observing this seems to be working pretty well. It, it has been pretty pretty satisfying and okay. I'm going to add a light reflection there. I'm going to get a lot of white on my brush here. I'm trying to create a pretty light value. I'm going to come right here with this. Maybe another one there. Let's make a little bit of a wiggle reflection. See how that is? Wiggle reflection come here. And then I'm going to come back. Uh, pop a little bit of this right in that leaf. I will just get a little more blue on my brush where I need to and pop another little reflection. And then around the front, and you can take one right over the tip of that. Right here, I'm going to go, I'm going to smidge like that. It's going to give me that sort of water effect. Smidge! 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 Another Sherpaisms that are really weird and hard to figure out why I say. A smidge is a gnomish me measuring unit. Yeah. 
I, having been almost raised by gnomes, I'm going to bring a <laughs> bit of a reflection here. Add a little white. I got to brighten it up for here. Come around and do some lines here. I was a little more white. And make a little stroke there. See how you went? We kind of curved a smile and then it did an imposing smile. Yeah. Now, again, just curve into the side of the sleeve and then go, oh, I see the reflection coming on that outside there. See, it's that's that little how ripple. We, yeah, we're talking about ripples. Asian Mulder would be like, ripples, I'm squatching. <laughs> All right, so <laughs> I'm using that now for when I'm swatching. Swatching watercolors. John's, what are you doing? And I just, I have to do it every time. I'm like, I'm swatching. I'm swatching. And we watch enough X Files that he thinks that's fun. <laughs> I'm going to just make someday some reflections. Someday someone's going to catch me in the woods and they're going to ask me what I'm doing. And you're going to go, I'm squatching. I'm squatching. So I like to add some different values, you know, different places so that I can show that this is this is nice and happened. All right, that's looking really good. Now I'm going to get at first the mid value of the blue. And I'm going to come here and let's make a curved reflection right there. This is like a water. This is like a little water got on the leaf. So I go wiggle, 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 and I swoop and swoop. Just trying to make these little shapes. Put a little drop there. I'm going to put some drops right here. There. So once I have those in, I can get a lot of white onto my brush. These are my brightest reflections. They're pretty bright. And I can come here and add them to these, which will help it feel like a little bit of water <gasps> onto my leaf, hopefully. And you can even look for places that you think that that might, like right here, have a little reflection. Anywhere you think that that brighter light will add some dimensionality. I'll put one right there. See inside this. Ah, I'm just loving it. So look, we're just getting all kinds of just joy. Rinse this sucker out like you've never rinsed the whole painting. Just rinse it. Get that paint out. It's all up to you now. Now, it's very important that none of the blue get in the next thing. So I'm going to just make sure that this is dry by hitting it with a hairdryer. You guys ready? Okay. Uh, there's the button. Ta -da. There it goes. So thank you guys for coming hanging out. You know we love you guys. Really appreciate you sharing up your paintings and your work. We love seeing it. That's one of the things that Cinnamon and I love to do in the morning is we put on some coffee and uh, we'll go flipping through Facebook and on our website and seeing what all you guys are doing. And that's always been a lot of fun. So thank you for sharing that stuff up. We really appreciate it. All right. We're just saying that one of our favorite things to do is to put on some coffee and then go onto Facebook and our website oh, yeah. and look at pa people's paintings and stuff. And actually, uh, watch Facebook after the show, because we may pop over there. Oh, yeah, we can do that. special reason. There might be some... Very special reason. So if you don't follow the Art Sherpa Facebook page, different than the group, mind you, that would that would be good to follow it and then just be over there. And if you sign up for the gnomes, I'm going to tell you where we are, when we are. Get All right, are we ready for the reflection? Absolutely. I'm going to load up with this cad yellow. You use the bright yellow that you have. You load it right into your brush. Enjoy that load. Get a little bit of your red, and you're going to make a very bright orange. We're going to make a nice bright orange that we've been painting our leaf with. Get that nice bright orange. And it needs to be, just, you don't want it to be red, but you do want it to be distinctly orange. And come right here, and I'm going to just make some reflection strokes that are catching. Catching the light, every once in a while I might grab different values of pigments so that they each have a bit. I'm going to curve this one around. But curve maybe around here and come back. I'm going to put a little bit of it right there. I find it's good to pop it around different places because what you're talking about is maybe, let's do a curve this way, the ripple. 
Give me some of that hair. Come right up the black with that. See how that just makes it seem like there's just something above the leaf? Yeah. It is fun to paint water. Water can stress people out. They get real worried about it. But what I would say is, is that water is so fun. Because once you understand you're just painting, you're not painting the see-through part of it. You don't have to mind bend your brain like that. I'll pop a little reflection there. Maybe one here. See how we're doing. Yep, beautiful. Can't really get it that wrong. It's nice to put one maybe right here. And right there. I like to soften these out a bit. No? Feel like, yep. Yeah. We can sign it. Wow. Man, we're 40 minutes. Actually, there's minutes. one thing we could do before we sign it. Okay, one And more. I'm totally, you know me, I'm into signing it, but <laughs> I'm going to get a little bit of my white. And I'm going to just go through and touch up any of my leaves, veins that needs a slight tweaking. You know what I'm doing? I just refine those a little bit. And that's, that's just something that you can do. Like right here, I had a little bit of a. A little bit wet. I get fussy. You get fussy. I sometimes get fussy. And just be nice to make sure that this has a little dimensionality to it. There we go. Making it pretty. Yeah. Just making sure that it's as pretty as it needs to be in the world that it's in. Now I'm going to switch to my signature brush and not try to sign this with my, uh, with my number eight. I'm sure I could, but I'm just not gonna. I'm going to use my white, which is going to be light. I've got my number one detail. I do have that listed in the description. I'm going to come here down in the corner and just use this little brush to give this a signature. I do think about how my signature looks with the painting. Um, and the reason for that is, is I understand that every mark I make is part of the composition. There's no hard and fast rule about this, though sometimes you will hear artists speak like there is. <laughs> um, but what it is, is just be mindful, be thoughtful of what you're doing. Don't just, you know, put a big red mark on there unless you have a really good reason to. And then definitely do if you have a really good reason to. Well, gosh, we did awesome on this. this is, thank you guys for hanging out with us. Thank you so much. Be good to yourselves. Definitely cut yourself a break. Say something kind. You know, give yourself a hug. Be good to each other. Just be loving as you can. And I want to see you at the easel really soon. And on time. Bye-bye. Mm -hmm. <laughs>